Hi, everybody. Today, I'm happy to have Carol Bearer with me, um, and we're going to talk about her work and process. Uh, she is part of our show titled Scapes, opening this February. Uh, my name is Deborah Rosinski. I'm Executive Director of Bainbridge Arts and Crafts, and it's my pleasure to get to talk to you today, Carol. Thank you so much for joining us. Very excited to have your work in the show coming up. It's nice to be here, and thank you for doing this. Great, and you've got a lovely example of your work behind you there. Um, what's, what's the name of that piece? Uh, this one's called Blue 15. It's fairly recent, and it's, I'll be talking about it some more if you want, but it's basically a, a typical piece of what I do now, mm -hmm. what I've evolved to over the years. Great. Yeah, maybe, can you give kind of an overview of your background and how you came to become a painter? Well, um, one of the early members is being a child and being given a box of oil paints. No lessons, no anything, just oil paints. <laughs> and I took them out into a rooftop and decided, I looked around at everything and decided to paint the sun. <laughs> and I added the yellows and the oranges and the whites and all colors on there, trying to get that effect. And I must have piled it on very high and I felt very uh, frustrated. I did an apostle, but I think the most significant part of that was getting in touch with my desire to understand how to translate light in nature onto the canvas. It was a very frustrating day, but that, that was a consoling aspect of it. And I've had influences. I've, when I was very young, Monet uh, was very helpful for me in that I came, I was able to go up close to an original and I saw all the colors on the paintbrush. And I didn't realize that that was how paint could be used. Yeah, the texture and the, um, the way of physically laying it down with a, a brush or a tool. Um, yes, he had a lot of brush strokes, a lot like Cezanne also moved me. He had so many brush strokes. There was so much detail mm -hmm. in a general subject material. Um, I was very taken with it, very taken with it. And I mean, Cezanne really inspired me more in terms of he just sort of went his own way alone. And it wasn't a style that anybody could understand or really celebrate. Mm -hmm. And he went on. And I also, um, when I was young, Jackson Pollock was controversial. He's not very controversial now. And I didn't care about controversy then at all. But it gave me a sense of boundaries that could be pushed with paint. That was a good source of inspiration. It was. It was. It was really great to see all these people that were exclaiming preposterous and all kinds of reactions. But for a child, it was just interesting and another piece of information to build on. Was this in museums near you growing up? The, the yes, it was actually I used to take excursions into the city and I went in alone and so I could do whatever I wanted. And, it was, <laughs> and I just walked into galleries. There was no charge for that. And I took in all the art that I could see because it was fun. I think I really enjoyed being off on my own and doing my own thing. And painting, I think, became a primary focus when I came here to Seattle mm -hmm. in 1982. It sounds quite historical, but <laughs> and yeah, I- You were on the East Coast before, is that right? Well, I was born in New York City and raised in that area. Mm -hmm. and went to school there and then went to ASU for a second round of graduate school and then came to Seattle. Mm -hmm. It was actually my reason for coming was to learn more about modern dance, skin and releasing, but I liked it here and decided to stay. Mm -hmm. But my professional career, the direction was unclear and I had to figure out uh, that. But I've always painted. I always considered myself a Sunday painter. Actually, I painted through 
everything all the time on the side. Mm -hmm. But when I came to Seattle, I, and that was not a pursuit I seriously considered, but it was something that I like to do. Yeah. And it was, it was challenging to put it together. But while I was doing this painting on the side, I had housemates and the housemates had a problem with my oil paints. Uh, the yeah. smells and the smells <laughs> and the landlord didn't care for the smudges on the rug and this was a problem. So, so I went out and found the studio, which wasn't far. I could walk there every day if I wanted. And that was interesting to learn about other artists and their process. But it was a but because I had a jolt being there. I had to put my work on the walls. The person that ran the studio liked to have a public face and have art shows periodically. Mm -hmm. And this was a whole other animal for me. And I was uncomfortable. I, I had work up there and the work sold, but I felt like an imposter. I didn't feel I had the training to deserve this. So at that point I went turned around and did some more study, took a lot more workshops, studied the figure, took sketch classes and read a lot on my own about color. Mm -hmm. And while I'm learning and go, I you know, went through many phases with this. So I originally it was, I guess, as a young gal painting a flower and then landscapes and port. I got into figurative work when I was trying to figure out my own psychological whatever and it was a way to express myself with that but my voice was evolving and I got to a place where the background was so much fun to apply and I wanted to say something so I would use the background as a back well it was a background but I used symbols to tell my story. And I used eggs and pencils and doors and geometrical lines in order to tell a story. I did this for quite a while until one day I stepped back and I thought, is this really saying what I want to say? What am I saying here? Where's the feeling? And I couldn't honestly answered that. So this was a very difficult moment for me, but I, what I did was I dropped the symbols out of frustration. I just dropped it and I thought, okay. And I tried painting just the background <laughs> and that's all it was for a while. And it was uh, not much in my evaluation, <laughs> but I stayed with it and I kept painting that and then over time uh, the more experiential and nature inspired work came forward mm -hmm. and that's that's pretty much how it evolved I would refer to the work as meditational mm -hmm. or experiential I mean basically the work is meant to create a sense of natural phenomena by the use of color yeah that doesn't mean yeah yeah but it doesn't mean i go out to the landscape and see it and take a mental photo and then take it back into the studio and try to paint the picture i saw mm -hmm. it's more about the feeling yeah I, I think the person that says it best is amy ten and um she writes fiction mm -hmm. But she writes, she says she writes fiction in order to keep the focus on the feeling. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. And I can relate to that in terms of this work. Nicely put. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's meditative in the way that you just described, where you can see it and there's different nuances and different it, in different times of the day, different parts come forward. And uh, it's um, experiential too, because it's what people bring to the work that makes it meaningful. And my best example is when 
I went to Florida. I thought, oh, you know, get some sun. And uh, I went there and spent a while there, and it was cloudy every single day. <laughs> so, what, <laughs> so what do you do with that? So I went home, and I had to paint that because that was my experience. And I really didn't think a whole lot about it. But that's that was my doom or whatever. And then the work showed at the Kuz Art Museum. And the people who lived there came up to me and told me I captured the feeling of the piece, of their of it captured the feeling of the water. And I didn't know what they were talking about. So the next day I went to their water, I went to the Oregon water and saw, <laughs> I saw what they meant. Hmm. And I found that very phenomenal. Yeah. Such waters and such a different effect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in that way, experience. Yeah. What can you share with us about the the process you use for applying paint? And it's mostly water-based paints that you use. Is that true? Yes, yes. Now I'm using water-based paints. I've been through all kinds of mediums, but I've settled in on acrylic. Mm -hmm. And it's about uh, layering mainly. So I'll start with a color. Color is usually the determining factor. And I think the best aspect of the whole thing is to stay open to what transpires there. And I'll start with a color, take a color I feel like taking in that moment and let that direct the piece. And part of the process is about trying to figure out the direction it's going and tuning into that. Um, kind of like music, what's the rhythm here? Mm. And there has been more pattern lately. So it's about finding that pattern and then following that, working with that. You mentioned a background in modern dance. You feel like that plays in too? It, it feels like there's so much movement in your. <laughs> <laughs> reminds me yeah um I did give a talk at your gallery a few years ago oh. and when people in the audience looked at the work and I think it was a, a kind of a snide comment but she said well what do you do do you roller skate while you're painting it it was a very large painting <laughs> and, <laughs> and um yeah it's no. What did you say to that? <laughs> I think that is a real compliment that it shows so much flow after all that work. I thought, okay. <laughs> Sounds like a fun way to work. Yeah, doesn't it? Yeah. I'm not a formula painter. You know, the, I don't go in with a, a preconceived idea. I have done that and failed many a time. Or I don't even go in, I don't even draw up a spectrum of values that I want to work with a piece or a spectrum of color. I just um, have to stay open to what is going on there. Mm -hmm. And yeah, to go in with a design is just doesn't work that way. It's the wrong order. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a lot of artists just feel more authentic working in that way like you're starting from a feeling rather than a preconceived idea. Um, and it's, it's wonderful to be able to capture that so well that, you know, people experience it. <laughs> yeah, how long have you been in the Pacific Northwest now? Oh, a lot of years? Um, since 82, so I'm not good at math. You can go do the math. <laughs> uh <-huh. Sorry. laughs> good amount of time. <laughs> yeah. and you said you were at ASU, is that Arizona State? Did I hear yes, that? Yes, yes, I went into the program for an MFA and mm. I did coursework with, most of the focus was on dance, but I also took mm. art classes on the side too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, my main focus with dance was dancing and also choreography. And mm. I came here because of skin releasing. There was a workshop that I heard was terrific. And that was, the, you know, I liked here, so I decided to stay. <laughs> I was pretty much done with Arizona anyway, so I was ready for a change. Uh huh. The whole world of modern dance is is kind of a wonderful world to draw from, and and sort of a limited 
number of people can make it in that world. So I, I know I flirted with it myself for a while, but yeah. Okay. At UCLA in Southern California, there was a really good um, modern pro program there, but I always knew I was going to be a visual artist too. So ah. I kind of did it for the joy of it and then switched. <laughs> well, that's great to know what direction you were taking. I think the draw of the skin releasing for me when I came here, I, th I think there was a intermingling between the painting and studying skin releasing. Uh, that work was about learning to operate from kinesthetic cues instead of imitating the teacher and operating from an internal voice that uh, wasn't really what most of modern dance was about at that time. You could express yourself and there was choreography, but that physical learning of mo motion and aligning my body uh, was addressed so differently. And I think that had an early effect on my own painting. So the, the work we're having in the, the show, um, all three of you painters in the show are, are working with imagery that really could be considered landscape forms or waterscape forms or kind of environmental scapes in a way, even if they're non-specific and they the work all has a nice feel together. And, and we have... <laughs> who works with sound, who's gonna create a soundscape in the gallery um, on our first Saturday to um, experience along with viewing the work. So it's, it's kind of exciting to see all these sort of angles on this notion of creating environment and recreating a space, but really from an in internal place. I, I think all, all three of you in the show do that. Um, yeah. Don't draw so much from from concrete imagery, but the inspiration is there, just not, it's not about recreating so much as about relaying the feeling of it or the experience of it. And it's, mm -hmm. um, well, it'll be interesting to see it all come together. Yeah, we're excited about the combination. Are any of the pieces in the show, um, do they stick out in your mind as, somehow representative of what you desire to achieve in painting. But I feel the work there does reflect a lot of what I've been talking about in terms of meditative art and experiential art, where you bring your experience to the work. Well, it's very heartfelt work and I, I really enjoy looking at it and, and the feeling that I get from, from that, it's, I appreciate that calm space. <laughs> oh, well, I appreciate hearing that. I'm glad that that's your experience with the work. I mean, and, and I probably react that way more to some of the pieces that use a lot of blues and feel very water-like. I know you have some with more oranges and little brighter tones that feel a little more, I don't know, animated in or amped up from the color itself. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a different sort of note that's hit, I guess, <laughs> because of the color. Colors can express so much. There's so much emotion in every color and mm -hmm. how it's juxtaposed on the canvas can make such a difference. Yeah, and even the shapes that you're using, like the blue piece behind you, they're kind of elongated fluid shapes and, and some of your more reddish, orangish pieces have kind of more like staccato spots. Mm -hmm. Yes. Put it. Yeah. Yes, it, it, it seems as though the work um, varies depending on where I'm at and what I've just experienced. Yeah, it's always a challenge juxtaposing the color I'm working with, with how I want to space it and how I want to put the values in and where to put the light. Mm -hmm. And um, I think there are a lot there that would um, 
fit what we've been talking about. Thank you for sharing your your water and light and landscape and and environmental scapes with us in this talk today. And we look forward to seeing you in the gallery at the opening. Thank you. I look forward to it. Be sure you don't miss Scapes, our painting show featuring Carol Bearer, Patty Christie, and Scott Pascoe at Bainbridge Arts and Crafts from February 4th through February 15th.